Hello friends, welcome back to Moon Magic Spirit, and if you are new, welcome, my name is Meg, and today we're going to be talking about celebrating summer solstice, aka Letha, aka Midsummer. In today's video, I'm going to give you like a mini witch's guide to summer solstice, and I say mini because there is so much that you can do to celebrate and harness the energy of this holiday. Um, so I'm just going to be covering a few things in here for you to do to give you some ideas if you're wanting to celebrate. Summer solstice marks the longest day of the year and it also marks the halfway point through the year. So the polar opposite of that is Yule that we celebrate in winter in December. If you're in the southern hemisphere, however, you will be celebrating Yule now and Letha in December. Um, so, you know, here in the Northern Hemisphere, this is uh, celebrating and kicking off the beginning of summer and also the start of harvest season. So that is what we're gonna be approaching on next. Summer solstice is a good time to align yourself with the powerful energies of the sun and summer. The idea is that while everything is physically, tangibly growing and expanding around us, that it is time for us to grow and expand our ideas and desires. However, it's also a great time to express gratitude and to thank Earth for everything that you have, to like celebrate the bounty that you have so far, to wish for a fruitful harvest season. Um, so you can do that and then also you can do that with your desires, your ideas, your goals, your dreams, whatever it is that you wanna set your mind to accomplish. This is a time to reflect and thank uh, Earth and to also thank your spirits, your ancestors, your spirit team for what you have accomplished so far this year and to also expand and put your ideas and your intentions out there for what you hope to continue to work on. Now that is a very short and general idea of the vibe of the summer solstice. So here are some things that you can do in ways that you can celebrate. Drawing in the colors of the sun, the colors of fire, so like red, orange, and yellow are going to be a really great theme. So what I like to do is always get a bundle of flowers that represent those colors and that really represent summer to me and when I get these flowers I just have an immense like gratitude towards them. I think about what they represent to me, what they represent literally, um, and just about how we're able to have this beauty through flowers and just thinking about all the things that I have accomplished so far. And when it comes to flowers, one of my favorite things to do is to dry flowers out. And if for some reason I don't want to dry them out, when they come to a point of like wilting and like it's time, you know, like their time has passed, um, I don't personally throw my flowers away in the garbage. I like to return them to earth. I highly suggest that you do the same. It's a way to honor the flowers for, you know, what they gave you a beauty. Um, if they bring you joy, if they bring you happiness, like the lovely smell that they bring. It's just like a time to like really own in on, I keep saying like the mundane of things, but I love finding magic in the mundane. So just like really focusing on what do these flowers mean to me? What do they represent? And how can I thank them? So honoring the flowers is also honoring earth. It's honoring everything that, you know, has been gifted to us. So when you return things to the earth, you can put them physically like around your yard. Um, you could put that, you could bury them if you want to. Uh, I live by a area that has some large ponds. So I like putting mine into the ponds and thanking them for their use and what they've brought me as a way to honor them, as I've said. So I think it's just really important to return to the earth if it's safe for the earth and not hazardous very important. Oh, also if you compost, great for compost as well. Um, so if, when it comes to salt, don't put salt in the earth, don't bury salt in the earth. So just make sure even though it may be like a food item or like a flower or something like that, just always check to make sure that it's not going to harm the soil or the earth when you return it to earth. So definitely don't be putting salt in soil or on the ground or burying it. 
Another great way to celebrate midsummer is to have a bonfire and back in the day bonfires were used to really like to set intentions to get excited. People used to hop over bonfires and it's said that the person who jumped the highest like that would be how tall and bountiful the crops and harvest would be in the fall so like setting the intention for like a really plentiful bountiful harvest season and fires were also used to banish baneful energies so you can set a bonfire with the intention of like kind of letting go any negative energy that may be attached to you while also calling in uh, the spirit of the fire and the energy of the fire to help things grow to illuminate things to help set your desires and goals on fire to like help it come to you quickly whatever you want your intention to be and I also recognize and know that bonfires aren't easily accessible to everyone if you're living in an apartment complex for example or you know a bonfire just isn't your thing you can also set candles light some incense and as long as you have the same intentions that will work just as well you can also hop over your candles Candle stick for good luck with safety of course whenever we're talking about fire practice fire safety make sure you're doing it safely and not in a harmful way another thing that you can do I love doing this for Ostera is taking a bowl with water in it and putting a candle in it and anointing it and decorating it that's another way that you can bring like a fire element and fire energy into your practice Another great way to celebrate Letha Midsummer, Summer Solstice is to literally incorporate the sun. You can literally incorporate the sun by charging items with the sun. Um, so if you have a deck of tarot cards that you'd like to work with, you could put those out in the sun to charge them with the sun energy. I know a lot of us talk about putting like our crystals and like various items out in the moon to cleanse in the moonlight, but this is the opposite. So it's charging it in the daylight and depending on where you live, you need to be careful with this, uh, with how long you leave it out in the sun, with how hot it is. Um, so you can take any magical objects that you're using and put them out in the sun to charge it as long as it's safe. If you're going to sun charge your crystals, make sure you do a little research before to make sure your crystals are sun safe. For example, amethyst tends to fade in sunlight and there are several other crystals that can fade in sunlight as well. So be careful and mindful of what you're putting out into the sun. Um, so any other magical tools that you're using, you can put cinnamon out in the sun to charge it, any ingredients, you can, you know, sun charge your flowers that you're getting you can sun charge water. So we have moon water. You can also make sun water. Um, I know a lot of people like to brew their coffee and tea out in the sun and allow it to charge that way. So speaking of charging and making sun water, another thing that you can do is do a simmer pot. One of the main things to a simmer pot is adding water. So you can charge some water out in the sunlight. I would say give it at least two hours to really embody the energy of the sun. So you can bring in the energy of the sun directly to your simmer pot. This summer solstice summer pot is going to bring a refresh and renewed energy into the home. That is the intention that I personally like to set with the summer solstice summer pot. So once you add your water and bringing that direct sun energy into the pot, another ingredient I love working with is rosemary and the intention that I'm setting for this is purification. I'm adding mint for healing, sage for health and protection, I'm adding in some tea packets, so I have chamomile that's going to add some abundance, and then also working with lavender that's going to call in abundance, but the both of them together, in addition to abundance, can call, call in a calming energy. I also like adding salt to my simmer pots for cleansing and protection. So if you have sea salt, you can use that, pink salt, regular kosher salt, whatever salt you have, you can add a little sprinkle in with the intention for cleansing and protection. When it comes to bringing fruit into the simmer pot, if you have some leftover berries on hand, you can add those in to represent abundance and harvest. Um, uh, Fruits that I like adding to summer pots are oranges and lemons because they represent the sun and the sun energy. They really bring in that joy and happiness. I always love a good cinnamon stick and again it's to draw in and welcome abundance. 
And to top that off with sunflowers, again, it's a beautiful, simple way to celebrate summer solstice and to bring that energy into your home. When doing a simmer pot, again, make sure that you're practicing safety. You want to have this, you, you want to bring the water up to boil and then literally set it to simmer and let it go for hours until the water has evaporated. Um, depending on the pot, you can refill your pot daily with water. And typically, I find that my simmer pots can last like up to four to five days. You can kind of tell when the ingredients are done um, and when the simmer pot is like done uh, but it just adds this beautiful aroma into your house fills your home it adds like that cleansing component to your home and it just brings that energy drawing that energy into your home if you're a crystal person some great crystals to work with are citrine carnelian amber jade and then if you have like a honey calcite colored crystal that would be perfect again crystals that are drawing in the colors of fire are perfect to work with and whatever you feel drawn to and that intuitively feels right to you you can add those into your altar too another thing that i like to do to celebrate summer solstice is to just i i don't know i call it like uh earth meditate <laughs> so what I like to do is it's like a nature meditation so to say um, it's like a practice of grounding a practice of med it's like a practice of grounding a practice of mindfulness and it's also a little bit of like a nature meditation I like spending time outside and just really focusing on the present moment and just seeing what I can notice. So I really like staring at trees. Um, I like staring at water, staring at different flowers. I have a lot of hummingbirds by me. So just like watching the hummingbirds, looking at the dragonflies, just really taking in the nature that's around me. If I see like my little lizard friends that are popping out, I live in the desert. So if I see my little lizard friends, um, I'm lucky enough to have a pool. So like I'll look at the reflection of the pool, like on the tree leaves or seeing like what patterns I notice in the water. So a little bit of scrying is involved. So that's a great way to celebrate summer solstice if you don't have access to any tools. Just paying, at paying attention and being present in nature around you, going for a walk, um, having a picnic outside. You know, where I live, it's a little too hot for a picnic outside. <laughs> but if you live somewhere where it's not over 100 degrees, definitely try to have a picnic outside if you can. That's another great way to celebrate and honor summer solstice. If you're somebody that works with tarot, some tarot cards to pay attention to is the Sun, the Ace of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, the Six of Wands. Those all give very much like summer solstice, Letha energy, and some other signs and animals to pay attention to that can be representative of Letha is dragonflies, lizards, horses, birds singing, um, butterflies. You know, if you see like a little snail, a toad, a frog, anything like that, um, those are all representative of summer solstice. So even if you're somebody that has animal carvings that you work with, you could add those to your altar or just see if you notice them around in nature. See what you notice. Summer solstice to me is just a time to thrive and draw in abundance, to be thankful for the abundance that you have thus far, and to just really have like that spark of like hopeful energy of what's to come for the next six months, the rest of the year, and to see where life takes you and to just have that appreciation for earth have that appreciation for your spirit team or whatever your higher power is your higher self your intuition and just like really sitting in that and appreciating it you can journal about it too of course so let me know in the comments down below what are some of your favorite ways to celebrate summer solstice i really want to with the my youtube ch channel my intention is to build community so i would love it if you're comfortable sharing what you like to do to celebrate summer solstice especially if it's something i didn't mention in this video because I think part of being in this community, part of like being in a coven, part of being a witch, part of being spiritual is sharing your knowledge, sharing what you know so other people can uh, participate and you may give someone an idea to try something new and they may have said, you know, I've never heard of that before and that's something I want to add to my practice. It might be something I want to add to my celebration and practice. So please share how you like to celebrate summer solstice, what it means to you. I would really love to hear from you. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. I like covering all things mystical arts on my channel and always thank you so much for your time and energy. I really appreciate it. Happy summer solstice and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.